All right. Welcome to the Haskell Ring, the series where we solve programming problems, but you know, in Haskell. Next problem is Bon Appetit. Anna and Brian are sharing a meal at a restaurant and they agree to split the bill equally. Brian wants to order something that Anna is allergic to though and they agree that Anna won't pay for that item. Brian gets the check and calculates Anna's portion. You must determine if his calculation is correct. For example, assume the bill has the following prices, 2, 4 and 6. Anna declines to eat item K, which is the second one, which costs 6. If Brian calculates the bill correctly, Anna will pay 3. If he includes the cost cost of bill 2, he will calculate 6. In the second case, he should refund 3 to Anna. Let's take a look at the input format. The first line contains two space separated integers, N and K, the number of items ordered and the zero based index of the item that Anna did not eat. The second line contains N space separated integers, which are the bill items, I suppose, and the third line contains an integer B, the amount of money that Brian charged Anna for her share of the bill. Yeah, basically we're given some data. And we need to verify that this data is correct, I suppose. So let's try to solve that. I guess one of the important operation that we need to have is ability to exclude arbitrary element from a list. It's not that easy to do in Haskell, as far as I know, because you usually access Haskell lists sequentially. As the first step, I want to implement a function that will make it easier for us to exclude arbitrary element from a list. I'm going to call it exclude nth. This function takes an integer, basically the index of an element that we want to exclude, the list of the elements and returns another list of the elements. What would be the easiest way to do that? Uh, as far as I can remember, in Haskell we have a function called split at, which is a very interesting function which has kind of a similar signature to exclude nth. It also takes integer, a list of elements, but returns a pair of list of elements. So let's take a look at what it does. Let's generate a bunch of numbers and let's split it at fifth. And as you can see, it just splits a list and half at the index that we provided. So what I'm thinking about is that we can probably utilize this function to implement our include nth function. So the array is zero base. That means that with index five, we refer to this element. That means after the splitting the list, the element that we want to remove is at the head of the second list. So that means that to implement exclude nth, we have to concatenate left part and the tail of the right part. And now let's define left and right part. They're going to be defined uh, through split add. Like so. Since split add returns tuple, we assign left and right with power matching. This should be the implementation of this function that will exclude nth element from a list. So let's see how it works. Uh, again, let's generate a list from 1 to 10 and let's try to exclude the fifth element from it. As you can see, after five, we have seven. So this function works, works perfectly. Another interesting thing with this task is that it has a kind of a complicated input format. So I think we're not gonna use interact function this time and we're rather gonna work with IOMonet directly. So what I wanna have, I wanna have a function called get list, which reads a line from the input and parses it into a list of elements according to their implementation of read type class. So the type of this function is going, to be, is going to be something like that. So this function will be able to read any type of elements from the input if there is an instance of read type class for them. We're going to get the line. We are going to separate that line by words and we are going to read each individual element of that list of words and we're going to simply return that. This is the function that we are going to use to read the input format. Let's check how it works. Let's try to get a list of integers. Let's provide that list. And yeah, it parsed the list of integers correctly. So this is going to be a very useful function. And now let's move on to the solution. So the solution is going to take K, the index of the, of the element that Anna rejected, then the list of bill items, and 
B, which is basically the amount of money Anna contributed to the bill. And then this function should return the solution. But the problem is, if Brian did not overcharge Anna, print bon appetit on the new line. Otherwise, print the difference that Brian must refund to Anna. So basically, the solution may return either integer or string. But the string is always the same. String is always the same, it's bon appetit. So for this particular situation, I think we can try try to use a type called maybe. So maybe consists of two possible types, which are just some value or nothing. This particular type encodes an optional value. Basically, if value might be missing for whatever reason, you can always assign nothing. But if the value is there, it's just that value, which is kind of convenient. So in most of the mainstream languages for this purpose, they usually use null pointers. But in Haskell, we have some sort of like a type safe version of that. Uh, when Brian has to refund some money to Anna, we're going to return just that amount of money when we have to in Bon Appetit, we will just return nothing because there is nothing to refund. First, we need to check for an important case. When Anna paid more than an actual price of the bill. And an actual price of the bill is something that we'll have to calculate later. In that particular situation, we have to return just B minus actual price, which is the amount of money Brian should refund. Otherwise, we just return nothing. And now we have to calculate the actual price of the bill. According to the description of the problem, we have to exclude case element from the bill, sum all of the elements up and divide them by two. So let's actually do that. Since we already implemented exclude nth, it's actually pretty straightforward. So we exclude case element from the bill, we sum everything up and we divide everything by two. So this is how we calculate the actual price. And that should be the final solution for this particular problem. So now let's implement the main entry point for that particular solution. Since we we are not using interact function here and we parse everything imperatively, I'm going to open a do block. In the input, we have three lines. First line contains n and k. Second line contains bill. And the third line contains the amount of money Anna paid. This is how we're going to parse the input data. So what's interesting is that we don't really need N because all of the elements of the bill are located in a single line and they're going to be uh, parsed by this particular assignment. So we don't really need N. After we have parsed all of the input parameters, we just put them into solve function and solve function returns just integer or nothing. If it returns nothing, we have to print bon appetit. For that, I think we need to use a very interesting function, which is called maybe. It takes some value b and some function from a to b. So you see this function returns the same type as the first argument of this function. And as the third argument, it takes maybe that contains a, the value that you can apply this function to. So what this function does, it uses uses the first argument as the default value when maybe is nothing. This uses this function when maybe is not nothing but contains a and it applies this function to that a and then it returns result. You see it may either return the default value or the result of this function. So and it's really useful to unwrap maybes. Uh, let's see how it works. For example, we have a maybe which is just five. We want to use bon appetit as a default value. So we're gonna do, we're gonna invoke maybe, uh, we're gonna assign a default value bon appetit. And as the function that we wanna apply to five, we're going to use show. So show will convert five to string and bon appetit is also string. So you see in this situation, it returns five. But what if maybe is nothing? In that case, it will return bon appetit. So you see, if the value is missing, it just uses the default value. And this is exactly what we want in our solution. So in our solution, we're going to use just that, maybe bon appetit, or apply show to the result of the solution. And that entire expression will return either a number as a string or bon appetit, exactly what we need in that case. And by the way, in bon appetit is with 2p. So after that, we just have to print that uh, particular solution. So. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Something, something strange. Oh yeah, uh, I just forgot that get list returns a list and I assign it to a single uh, value. So I have to actually powder match it properly. And now it compiles. So this should be the final solution of this particular problem. So let's try to submit it. <laughs> 
it passes the sample test and let's submit for the final submission. It works. So let's actually refactor this a little bit. I want to actually refactor these three lines and I think I know a perfect function for this. So the function that we will need is located in control monad module. It's a very interesting function. It's called replicate m. So it takes an integer, it takes a monad with some value a and returns a monad with a list of a. So what it basically does is replicates the value inside of a monad n times. And if monad, for example, as in our case, io performs an action, that action will be performed n times and the result of the action are going to be collected in the list. So get list returns io monad. So, and if you do replicate m three times get list, it will return io of list of list. So basically it will call get list three times and for each element get list returned, it will put it into, into the final list. So what that means, that means it enables us with squashing these three lines into a single line like so which is actually pretty cool. And this is the beauty of Haskell. So IO is an action and in Haskell you can treat action as the first class value and for example, replicate it and then collect the results of, of all of these actions. And I guess to for that to actually work, we need to import control monad. And now it compiles. Okay, and let's just quickly verify that this particular refactoring works. All right, it works. Next problem.